During the Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, the time of the construction of the pyramids, the main divinity was Ra, god of the sun. The pyramids and the way the Egyptians buried themselves were dedicated to him. In the Middle Kingdom was spread the cult of a god called Ammon, god of the hidden and patron of the city of Thebes. In the Old Kingdom, the royal capital of Egypt was in Memphis, and on the western bank of the Nile in Memphis, the pyramids of Saqqara and the pyramids of Giza were built, the great tombs of the pharaohs of the Old Kingdom. During the Middle Kingdom, the capital was relocated to Thebes, and on the western bank of the Nile in Thebes, the tombs of the pharaohs of the New Kingdom were built. In this aerial view of Thebes, you can see that there is a green area into which the Nile River flooded every year. And right behind this area, the funerary temples of the different pharaohs of the New Kingdom were built. Beyond them, you can find these spectacular cliffs, beyond of which is a hidden valley known as the Valley of the Kings, where you'll find all the tombs in which the mummies of these pharaohs were buried. It seems that these tombs do not have any similarity or connection with the pyramids of the Old Kingdom built a thousand years before. However, the architectural diagram of the tombs that were in the pyramids is the same diagram of the tombs in the Valley of the Kings. The tombs of the pharaohs of the Old Kingdom had the tomb where the pharaoh's mummy was placed, the pyramid, and they also had two temples, the High Temple and the Low Temple, where funerary ceremonies were made and offerings were brought to the pharaoh's spirit. That program is still applied in the New Kingdom. But the pharaoh's mummy, instead of being deposited in a pyramid, is now deposited in an underground tomb called Hypogeum, located in the Valley of the Kings. While in the Old Kingdom Ra, god of the sun, was worshipped with a pyramid, in the New Kingdom Ammon, god of the hidden, was worshipped with a Hypogeum. And so the pharaohs began to bury themselves in structures excavated in the earth. Most of the tombs of the Old Kingdom, including the Pyramids of Giza, were robbed before the Middle Kingdom, so this would also serve to prevent thieves from robbing the tombs of the pharaohs. The concept is the same, however. We have a place where the mummy is deposited, and a temple of easy access, where offerings such as food and clothing can continue to be taken. Each tomb in the Valley of the Kings had its own mortuary temple on the outside so that the offerings could be placed. Among those temples was the temple of Amenhotep III. He built these huge statues known as the Colossae of Memnon. The name comes from a Greek legend that said that the statues were the portrait of a prince named Memnon, who was the son of the Don. And every time the Don touched their heads, the statues began to cry greeting her mother. The truth is that these statues were raised by Pharaoh Amenhotep III and constitute a small part of his enormous mortuary temple. These were at the entrance to the temple, and it was one of the largest temples of the New Kingdom. Today the temple has been lost and the only thing that remains are the colossi, so when you stand in front of them, you have to picture the statues with a huge Egyptian temple behind. With all that said, let's take a look at some of the tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Up until now, 63 tombs have been discovered, although the site is always under excavation as new things are constantly being found. The cliffs in the back, called Theban Hills, are dominated by a peak, known to the ancient Egyptians as Tadehent. Due to its pyramid-shaped appearance, it is probable that this echoed the pyramids of the Old Kingdom a thousand years earlier. The valley was used for burials from approximately 1539 to 1075 BC. On the outside of the tombs, the only thing visible from them is this large entrance that used to be covered by dirt and sand. Something incredible about these tombs is how deep they are excavated. Some of them have tunnels that are hundreds of meters long, and these tunnels are completely engraved with inscriptions in Egyptian hieroglyphics and with scenes from ancient Egypt, some better preserved and others quite deteriorated. The best part of these tombs is that, unlike the Egyptian temples, these spaces were completely sealed and isolated from the outside world for thousands of years, and thanks to this the pigments with which they colored the walls, the columns and the ceilings are preserved. This is the tomb of Pharaoh Meremptah, 
and from the entrance you can already start to see these colorful carvings on the rock. This tomb is from the 19th dynasty, and the walls are decorated with ancient Egyptian texts, the pharaoh with the gods, and some astronomical scenes. The tombs had several chambers and several rooms for the placement of goods and offerings. And at the end of the 160 meter corridor is the burial chamber. And it originally had four nested sarcophagi with a pharaoh's mummy inside. Here's a diagram of the whole tomb. And you can see all the small secondary chambers and you can appreciate how deep into the earth they excavated for the making of these tombs. This is a tomb of Pharaoh Ramesses I, also from the 19th dynasty. You can see that it is much smaller than the one we saw before because it was a hasty burial. And one particular thing about it is that although it is a small tomb, the pigments on the walls are perfectly preserved. They are decorated with the Book of Gates, an ancient text that narrates the passage of a newly deceased soul into the next world. You can also see the pharaoh with the gods Horus and Anubis. You can see that the interior of Riverhut architecture is still being imitated in the form of a space and in the paintings. The intensity of the colors inside this tomb is so impressive, and almost every detail of the painting can be appreciated perfectly. It is as if you traveled 3,000 years into the past. This is the tomb of Ramesses IX from the 20th dynasty. And again, you can see a lot of the colors and hieroglyphic carvings on the walls as well as the ceiling. There is a profuse decoration of many representations of Ramesses IX with Ra, Horus, Osiris, and other gods. There are also representations of parts of the Book of Caverns, the Book of the Dead, and several other ancient Egyptian funerary texts. This one's more than a hundred meters cut into the mountain, it's very deep. The burial chamber has a large pit in the center where the huge nested sarcophagi were placed. Finally, we have the tomb of King Tutankhamun, one of the many sons of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Tutankhamun died at age 19. He accomplished nothing of significance. He was minor as far as history is concerned. But what's interesting about King Tut, and what makes him so famous, is that he managed to not get his tomb robbed, and everybody else's tomb got robbed. So in the early 20th century, British archaeologist called Howard Carter, with a bunch of other archaeologists, found the undisturbed tomb of King Tutankhamun with all his treasures inside, all completely intact. Tutankhamun's tomb is actually a small space. Now over 3300 years old, the paintings are still vibrant in color. There's a bright yellow background depicting scenes of his journey into the afterlife. other than his stone sarcophagus that you see over here. All of the objects and artifacts found in the tomb of Tutankhamun and the other tombs are today in the Egyptian Museum of Cairo, including Tutankhamun's golden death mask encrusted with precious stones, astonishing goods like furniture and canopic jars containing his organs, and his coffin made of 110 kilograms of solid gold. And of course his mummy, which today is actually kept inside of his tomb. 
Thank you for watching. I hope you learned and enjoyed the video. If you like Egypt, I have a full playlist with Egyptian architecture videos in my channel that you can see right here. Please support me with a like and comment what you think. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.